Hi, this is Lex from Chaos Theory, and on this episode of CTTV, I'm going to be replacing my Tunomatic bridge that came with my Phone Les Paul, and replacing it with a roller bridge that I purchased online. Okay, so the first step I want to do is make sure that I actually got everything that I ordered. It took a few weeks. Um, I ordered it from eBay, came about $30. Uh, this is shipped from China to Canada. Um, I made sure that the eBay had a great star rating. Um, I'll have I'll put the link out at the bottom of uh, this video so you can just go see yourself where I purchased this from. Uh, for the pieces that you want to make sure you have is you know obviously you want to have the the roller bridge itself. I'm going to try to see if you can see it. Um, so this is the bridge itself. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is it has all six uh, all six saddles, um, which obviously it does. Also, you want to check to make sure that the little Allen uh, little Allen screws are in there because this is an adjustable bridge as you can see right here we, it can slide uh, closer to the pickup or further away towards the towards the tail um, tail piece of the guitar so you know there's the that's the bridge uh, it came with it came with its two studs uh, so you can you can put it onto your on your guitar and also it came with the tail piece and as I'll show you with my guitar this is pretty rough looking so it's going to be nice for me to uh, replace the tailpiece as well with a nice, fancy, fresh, fine-looking one here. Uh, and again, it comes with the, the studs as well. So it very much is what you need to replace your your Tunomatic bridge on, uh, with a roller bridge. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm, of this, that the threads um, of the, each stud is the same that's already in the guitar because I really don't want to replace the cavity part that, that the, the, the bolt actually, or the stud screws in. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. So, yeah, so you want to make sure that you get all the parts and I uh, get all the parts. So, on to the next step, which is the guitar. Alright, so now that I have confirmed that I have the parts to update my bridge setup to use rollers. The next step I want to do, and something that you should always do, is uh, take measurements of how high your bridge and your tailpiece is. So what I did is I just took a measuring tape. It doesn't have to be something fancy as long as you use the exact same uh, measuring tape afterwards, so you have consistent results. Is I measured from from my body of my guitar right here to underneath the flush part of the adjuster that adjusts the height of your bridge and as well as the, my body of the guitar here to flush underneath of the tailpiece. In theory, when I put the roller bridge on, as long as I'm following uh, my measurements that I made on my piece of paper right here, uh, it, it should be very close to how my old setup was. It's not going to be perfect, but at least I'm in the right ballpark. Um, yeah, so as you can see, this is my current bridge. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You can see that, uh, I don't know if you can see the grud, but yeah, it's been, had years and years of grud. A lot of times playing shows and, you know, sweaty atmospheres and the shit just gets in your bridge. And, you know, I tried everything to clean it up, um, but I have had the tendency in the past to break strings mostly. And every time I broke a string, I, I broke a string, you know, on the bridge area right here, so I'm um, hoping that the roller bridge not only will give me a nice feel, because I do a lot of palm muting against against the, the bridge, um, so it'd be have much more of a smoother feeling, but it should allow me to be a little hard, like I like to be on stage with my guitar, this poor baby, uh, but allow me to really wail on it and not worry about breaking a string, because you know you look at this and then I take the the roller bridge which is going to go like this, um, you can see that it, it, it's just more, it's not so sharp, it doesn't have these little edges that are sharp. So, so the next step is um, I'm going to detune my guitar, I'm going to put new strings on it, so I'm going to cut off the, take off the strings, and I'm going to take the hardware off here, I'm going to take the bridge off, I'm going to take the, the I, I already looked at the studs, they look like they are the same threads, and I'm going to polish it up a bit since I had the opportunity, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, go to the next step, which is actually nothing to do with my guitar. What I want to do, because uh, a lot of people complain that, you know, the setup for a roller is, is tedious. And I, I can't see why it would be tedious. I guess I'll find out why it's tedious. But uh, I'm, I'm, I think it's because they don't really do a lot of prep work when they first set up. So, you know, you want your intonation to be dead on 
when his guitar is all finished. And I think a good starting point is one, taking the measurements like I just outlined. And also, I want to make this bridge, my new roller bridge, to have the exact same space here uh, for each saddle to match up with the spacing that I have. I just have the spacing that's on these, these saddles to match up the spacing with here. And it requires Allen keys, obviously you would know that. Um, it, by looking at it, there's you need a small Allen key and a, and a medium Allen key to make the adjustments. But I want to make an adjustment so when I put this on, it should almost act as if I never replaced the bridge. And that's my goal, whether it goes through, oh, I'm not sure. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that before you order a roller bridge, it's very important that you take the measurements of, of your current bridge and compare them to the specs that you sh if you don't see specs on on the site that you're buying them from don't buy it because you you, you gotta go buy the specs of uh, most most Les Pauls um, Epiphones and many Gibsons uh, they're all 10 10.3 millimeter spacing between each string I don't know if you can see the strings here uh, but you know each between each spacing is 10.3 millimeters uh, there are other widths in certain models of uh, Gibson um, and I'm not sure about Epiphone but um, definitely Gibson has uh, different uh, widths between the strings a little bit closer uh, so you want to make sure you want to you want to do your homework before you order this online you want to get the measurements uh, you want to get the spacing between uh, each each stud so it will go on top just like that without without any issues and uh, yeah uh, and then that's then you're ready to go once you get your package and then you match it up like I matched it up before I'm gonna go through with this and make sure that yeah so far it looks good so uh, let's move on to the next spot and I'm gonna strip this guitar down so all there's left is just a bare guitar then we'll go from there and uh, using these measurements Okay, so I <clears throat> took off took off the hardware, uh, removed all the strings, gave it a little bit of a polish. I mean, it's not 100% polished. Uh, again, I just really want to put this back together, but uh, I just want to clean her up because it's a great opportunity to do so. Also, I couldn't help notice some of the nicks during uh, when it was pr when it was built. Uh, looks like they were a little careless here, but luckily enough, you can cover that up with the bridge and the tailpiece. So now I am going to. Uh, I already spent some time uh, matching up the tailpiece, uh, the new one, the new roller one, uh, as close as I can with the the old one, which is right here. Just to show you, you know, it's pretty. It was pretty gritty looking. Uh, nevertheless, you know, it lasted for a number of years since I had this guitar, which is, by the way, it's my uh, Epiphone Prophecy EX, uh, first first generation. Um, so yeah, so. Here's the old bridge, and now I'm going to start putting the, uh, putting the, the studs back in. And these are the new studs, and they are the same thread, so it's great they can screw back in. I'm just going to put them in um, all at once right now, and then I'll I'll fine tune them to the height that I had originally did the measuring for. Uh, yeah, so it's it was convenient because I didn't want to get into removing these to replace them with the other ones because I didn't know what kind of mess I would deal with. Luckily, um, they they shipped pretty good, and you know that's about that's about average. So just give me a few minutes while I uh, do some fine tuning here. So I'll be right back. Okay, so in a few minutes here, I just did some fine tuning, make sure that they've followed the measurements that I originally made. Uh, with these with these measurements I made here uh, again this is not going to make it perfect install I'm sure I'm going to have to spend some time doing a tune up uh, to get the intonation back to where it was and the feel and the height and the action makes the actions all all fine uh, but overall it's it's pretty close um, also I made sure 
that the height is, 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 is you know they made they designed the bridge uh, the height of the saddles um, consistent on the roller versus the traditional so if I can show you this um, you know they're if you set them you put them side by side like this uh, you'll see that it's pretty much straight on uh, like I said it's it you, you'll still have to do some setup but at least this gives me hope that it's not gonna hopefully take forever but this is my first install with the with a roller bridge so it's always a new territory so now you know you set the, the bridge on like this Mm -hmm. Okay, it was a little bit snug, but I did get it down into the new location. Um, let's get the little little screw adjustments now instead of having to use your fingers, which can be hard to do. It's nice and tight in there, um, and the you know tailpiece is in there just like any tailpiece would be. And uh, so I might just just take a take a little Allen key and. Just uh, put the screw inside, just to, you know, snug it in. And then next, I'm going to put a set of strings on this and try to do a setup and see how that comes out. And then I'll give her a whirl. All right. Okay, so I uh, put on some fresh set of strings. Uh, tuned it up. Uh, the only problem I seem to have ran into, uh, not a major one, but a bit of a stickler, is uh, when I went to adjust the action, uh, it's because it's so new in, in my opinion, is that the actual stud was re is really tied up against the inside of the, inside of the holes here uh, of the bridge. And so turning it, whether it was using a wrench, using a screwdriver, just seemed to be impossible at this point. Um, and I even had these let off loose, so don't worry, they weren't tight. I wasn't trying to turn something that was crazy tight. So what I actually had to do is try to get a, where I wanted my action. My action was, wasn't perfect, it was off just a little bit where I like to have it. So what I had to do was uh, detune the guitar strings down to a really floppy detune, almost like the, you could just, you know, they could move all over the place. And this allowed me to, to unscrew the two, two uh, studs here and lift off the tailpiece, put it over here, then take the bridge off, and then with my calculations I made earlier, adjust these nuts and down a little bit, then put it back on. I had to do this about two times until I was really happy uh, with the action. Other than that, the intonation, the uh, way it comes, you know, like I said, I did a little bit of fine-tuning comparing my bridge, my old bridge with the new bridge, and it wasn't, it, 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 the G-string was off, it was a flat a little bit, so I had to, had to tighten up this little spot here just so the pitch was pitch perfect. Other than that, uh, I'm really happy with the product. Uh, tuning, tuning is unbelievable. Uh, it's just like there's no ting ding, like no ting sounds when you're tuning up. It's like it just rolls. It's almost like the, the tuner just tunes so easy. So it makes me want to think about the upper half now of my guitar. Maybe some roller nuts, uh, a roller nut at the top, and some locking tuners. I'm not sure, but uh, it feels good. I put my palm against this, and it just feels amazing. Uh, doing bends, uh, it's just unreal. But uh, let's uh, let's give it a test. All right. All right, let's uh, let's give this thing a whirl, okay? <laughs>
yeah, she feels pretty good. And uh, yeah, the bends, the bends can bend up really, really well. So if you, I think that if you really want to have that uh, play like butter and be able to do those crazy high bends and, and it, without killing your hand doing so, I think a roller bridge is a great idea. Very cheap investment. Uh, and like I said, I got some, some pretty good sustain from it and just rocking out of it. So anyway, this is Lex from Chaos Theory. If you have any questions, just leave some comments below and see if I can help you out. Alright. <laughs>